All right, guys, welcome to another KevCam Night class tonight. Tonight I have Mr. Tim Micah helping out, answer any questions, concerns that come up along the way for you guys. Good evening, everybody. And uh, just want to thank everybody for coming to the uh, night class again and taking the time out of your night. Um, now, for those of you guys that are new, um, I see a lot of familiar guys in here, but for those of you guys that are new um, with GoToWebinar, everybody is muted right now, and that's just to eliminate any background noise. But if you guys do have any questions at all, um, there is a questions panel inside the GoToWebinar. And uh, go ahead and type your question in there. And uh, definitely feel free to ask as many questions as possible because these night classes, like I've said in the past, are solely dedicated for you guys for, le for learning. And uh, so let me know if you have any questions or concerns that come up along the way. And uh, we'll address them or Tim will address them right away or he'll tell me to pipe down and answer the question. <laughs> So, all right, um, so tonight we are going to be covering HSM uh, spiral and horizontal machining. Um, so that's going to be our main talking uh, subjects for tonight. Um, for those of you guys that are new, um, we definitely want your guys' suggestions. And um, so what we do is we will, you guys shoot me an email on a suggestion and we will send you a free hat and t-shirt. Um, and there's a couple of guys that are still waiting for theirs, and we're uh, still at SolidWorks World currently, so just waiting for those guys to get back, and those shirts will get shipped out for you guys. So um, definitely send those over to me. If you guys don't have my email address, I will put it into the GoToMeeting chat right now for you. So, so there is my Kevin. Yep, go ahead. Okay, yeah, Kevin, Kevin, before you get going too far along there, I just kind of want to comment. I know some of the guys, you know, this question comes up quite a bit. Um, is the um, you know what is HSM versus Mill 3D versus H versus HSS? They're all different modules and different things that can get added to a license. All do 3D type uh, toolpath. It's just uh, you know some of you guys have this, and some of you is something that you could uh, talk to your account manager about adding that HSM module. Yeah, and if you guys, if, if we're covering something tonight with like HSM, um, we're going to be kind of going through HSM for the next few nights just because there's so much in there. If there's something not there, um, you know, let me know. Um, or if you do talk to your account manager, um, if you guys don't have this module, tell them you want the KevCam discount, and uh, we'll get that module added on there for you guys at a, at a discount price just for uh, going through the, the night classes with me. So, all right. So let's get the ball rolling. Oh, one other thing here is I want to show you guys is in the um, all the night classes are recorded. So for those of you guys that missed out on a previous class, um, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I will put the link in the uh, chat for you guys for that. Um, it's going to go through all the videos uh, that we've done in the past. Um, I also do some short little you know, a couple minute long videos, just tips and tricks for using working areas was a new one. Uh, actually, Mark actually did that one. Um, but lots of uh, videos in here going through pretty much everything inside Solid Cam. And if there isn't one in here that you, or if there's one that you can't find in here, let me know and we'll get it made for you. So um, definitely, you know, want these to benefit you guys as much as possible and get you guys uh, the most training as possible. So, and then also we have something new. Uh, we've kind of added, and I've kind of been kind of talking about it in the past, but let's see, do we have George? Yeah, George Lauer. George Lauer just took the Solid Cam certification test yesterday. He is our first uh, person that is a certified Solid Cam associate, so congratulations, George. Um, for those of you guys, I know Jeff, um, you were asking about it, and I don't know if we have Tim Anger in here. Um, that is all ready to go for you guys. So uh, to show you guys where you go to that is if you just go to your subscription and click on Solid Cam Certification. Now you guys all get free tests with every seat that you have on subscription. So um, these tests are free. Now if you want to purchase additional tests, um, the prices are in there for the, for like this one is the Certified Solid Cam Associates test. Kind of gives you an overview of you know what it is you know passing grade what it's kind of covering in there um, and then basically to get started for you guys you can just click the get started button and it's automatically going to populate an email for you and just let us know when you guys want to start the test and we'll send that test over to you and you do get an hour long to uh, to take that test and 
Um, George said it was a little tough on time, but uh, he, he managed, uh, he had with time to spare, so. But uh, for, like I said, Jeff, definitely uh, come over here, check it out. Um, everything is all ready to go. Um, we're still finishing, doing some finishing touches on the expert test, but um, the professional test is a three-part test. Um, so as soon as the web page opens up here. Um, so the segment one is going to kind of cover your two and a half D, basically kind of eye machining side of things. Uh, the segment two test is going to be covering kind of what we're covering tonight, uh, HSM, doing some of your 3D stuff. And segment three is going to be covering your fourth axis. So, but any questions that come up along the way for that, you guys can shoot me an email also. Okay, enough of that. Let's get into HSM. So right now, we're going to start off with HSM spiral first, and then we'll get over to uh, horizontal. Um, so spiral is basically kind of what it says. It's doing a spiral path. It works very, very well on a like a circular surface or even just like a surface that is, you know, if we have four corners, all four corners are connected and maybe doing like a chamfer. Um, for those of you guys that are real familiar with HSS, this is kind of like the HSS morph between boundary curves um, or parallel um, using the spiral feature. So um, right now, this one ha has been completely roughed out. I just did a 3D eye machining toolpath on here for you guys. Um, so we have the part completely roughed out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we're going to get into the HSM side of things. So um, you guys can come up to your tab up here where you can right click on your operations, but uh, we'll just do 3D HSM, and it's gonna be helical machining. Now to get to this, you guys just hit the little box up here and then come to your helical machining. Now I went through all of the, at what every single button does last week, so if you guys are curious, I'm, I'm not gonna go into great detail tonight on what every single button does, we'll kind of breeze over a little bit, but. If you guys do have a question about that, definitely watch the video we did um, last week on the HSM, and I kind of go through everything there. So, But for right now, um, it's automatically found our target. Now, if you guys want a tighter tolerance than what your target is over here, you can actually pick a new target and change the facet tolerance in there. Um, so it's kind of nice there. You guys can apply fillets in the sharp corner areas if I turn that on, you'll see, you know, it applies fillets on there. A little bit of refresh from last week. Okay, so we're going to grab a tool here. Um, I'm just going to grab a half-inch bull nose end mill. Um, constraint boundaries. Basically, what I want to do is constrain it to a certain area. So um, what I'm going to do is we'll throw a chain on, on here on the bottom, once we get into some other parts, you know, we'll chain up here and maybe I just want to work on that radius only and I don't want it to go any farther, what you guys can do is change the levels so it doesn't go down, you know, past a certain depth or if you want to start at a certain area. So for this one, we'll just go to um, take new, throw a boundary on there and hit the green checkbox. Pretty easy. Now, you do have the option, like we talked about last week, you guys can do centered, external. It's going to work outside, external of the boundary. A um, lot of with the HSM options in here, the picture will automatically populate for you guys. So, you know, as you're clicking and you're not quite sure, um, definitely, you know, just kind of watch the picture as it changes. Um, so we can do internal to that line so that cutter stays internal to that boundary. Um, but for this one, we're just going to go up to centered. So that's pretty much it for picking your geometry. Um, the difference is with HSM is going to, it pretty much lays a blanket over the entire part versus when you guys are using HSS, you guys actually have to click on the surfaces. Now you do get that option um, in HSM if you want. You can actually click on here and do selected faces and go through and click all the selected faces or do a boundary box or a silhouette box. You guys have a lot of options on what you're picking here. But this is a going to be a much uh, faster way of picking geometry because it's, like I said, you're just kind of limited it to a certain area. Um, and if that area entails, you know, you guys drawing a sketch on there, um, you know, you guys can just right click on here and just create a sketch real quick and use that as your working boundary. Um, so real easy to use. Okay, so the pass is kind of where the guts of everything are. Um, 
I can put wall offsets in there or floor offsets, but I want to finish this up to size. Um, your step down. Basically, what, how, how much do you want to, to go down for every 360 degrees that tool goes around? So we'll just do, we want a, uh, you know, a decent finish here, so we'll use a um, five thou step down. Um, you guys can change the ramp angle of the helix if you'd like, um, so that's right there. And we have our Z top and our Z bottom. Um, those numbers are automatically going to be populated for the height of the part. But if, like I said, if you guys just want to work to a certain area, you guys can just click on Z bottom and put that number in there. Um, they did change something with the profile. I'm going to see if they can, if you can do it with uh, HSM. So I click on the surface. Yeah. So you guys actually don't even have to click on, you know, Z bottom anymore. If you guys just highlight it and then click, that number will automatically populate for you. So, and you'll see that I'm getting, you know, some are red and some are just regular white. Basically, when it's red or, you know, some of your guys' case, it might be green. Um, that means the the levels have physically linked themselves to the the model. So if something was changed, that number is automatically going to change along with it. Um, you guys can limit your angles, uh, kind of like what we talked about last week. So um, right now it's doing you know, all the way zero to 90, but maybe you guys wanted to stay off a certain area so you can just do, you know, like 45 degrees to 90 degrees to kind of limit the, the boundary area also. Adapt the step, kind of went over this last week, um, but just adds additional passes in there for you guys. And same thing with the optimized Z level. I'm not gonna go into two depths right here just because there's a, there's a lot here and we did cover this in great detail last week, so. Um, but if you guys need to add some additional stuff in there, um, you can add extra passes in there. Uh, you can do the use drive curve. Um, and same thing with the optimized Z level. And, you know, in short of things, you know, if we tell it to do a step down of 100 thou and it gets down to that flat four, um, it's, it might leave, you know, 90 thou versus, you know, uh, 10 thou or something like that just because it's, doesn't fall within your step down range. So you can optimize the Z level for you and it's automatically gonna insert those steps in there for you to get right down to size. Now your edit passes, um, basically if you guys wanna offset your surface, um, you can come in here, you can put a you know thickness around everything. So kind of like a, uh, a work piece offset or if you wanna like offset your surface, here's where you go to do that. Okay, link. <clears throat> now here is where all your retracts are going to be. Um, you know, like when we were kind of going through the two and a half D stuff, the technology was where all the good stuff was, and then the link was where your lead outs are. Well, they have it. You know, all the technology of your stuff is in your passes for your HSM, and then your link is still the same as basically your lead in and lead outs. Um, so you can do a. Right here, this one's a, one that wasn't there last week, is a minimum profile diameter. Now that minimum profile diameter is basically telling it if you guys have a part with a bunch of holes and you're coming back through, uh, to not go in that hole diameter that is, you know, anything 418 thou or smaller. Um, that's just a default number. And, you know, kind of like what I was saying last week, a lot of the default numbers in here and settings that are in here by default are set very well. Um, so there's a lot of times, you know, for this particular one, we basically just need to set our constraint boundaries, set our passes, and save and calculate, and we're gonna have a good tool path on this part. Um, but you can always have the option to come in here and fine tune it. So maybe you wanna do uh, a retract to start from a certain spot. Um, you know, you can do your optimized uh, clearance level, or you can do rate to part level. Um, you can do a start position, lots of stuff in here. Under the strategy, um, staying on the surface, you can kind of see what it is, what's going on there in the window. Um, how far do you want it to go out and around the surface? Um, and same thing with the stay down, you know, stay down within, you know, 75 thou. Like I said, all this is all default um, right now. Now your retracts, your clearance, you know, when you're going up and over something, here's all your clearance areas, your minimum rapid cut area, um, clearance by surface, your curl ups um, and your curl downs, and that's gonna be the, the radius going up and down. Um, smoothing, you can add a radius in there, so when it does a curl up, does a straight line, go down, um, you can have that radius in there also. 
and even more um, <laughs> lead in and lead out stuff right here. So um, we talked about the trimming last time. You can do extensions for your, your ramps, um, your lead in radius, um, or you can have a horizontal. So like I was kind of saying last week, all everything in here is basically the same as your two and a half D. Um, well, let me uh, just save it here. Let's just save real quick. If we open up a profile here, you're, it, everything is all the same, but um, it's a little simplified here in the, the profile operation. So, you know, we have our normal, our arc, our tangent arc, point, user defined, um, and you can just type those numbers in there versus, you know, right here is we just have them broke out into different sections for you guys. So um, you guys have your horizontal leads and all that stuff. Uh, you can do it ramp angles as it's do it ramping into the material. So with that being said, let's do a save and calculate. And we should get a nice spiral pass, basically just working all the way around the entire part. Now when it's calculating this stuff, um, you can actually see what it's calculating right now. Um, and it does use the multi-core, so it's going to utilize all the cores of your computer. Um, we get that question quite often of, you know, looking at buying a new computer, you know, should I get more cores and stuff like that? Yeah, the uh, L, well, I should say all, I'd say 90% of the operations inside SolidCam are going to use the multi-core threading feature. Okay, so we're coming in there, and... Um, doing our spiral in, and you'll notice I have a very large spiral, so let me just switch that up here to 100 thou. Like I said, I kind of left everything at default so you guys can kind of see what it's gonna look like. So now we're doing a nice arc in and doing our spiral, spiral around. Um, under our constraint boundaries, we're set to centered, um, we are doing a 5,000 step down. Um, you know, we're only doing the contact areas and going to get a real nice spiral finish coming down on this part. So if we go ahead and do a simulate here, we'll do a solid verify. It'll take it a second. Okay, so you can see we have it all roughed out from the 3 di machining, and now we'll play it through using that bull nose end mill. And like I said, it's just keeping it in contact with that material the entire time so it's not moving up, down, you're not getting any uh, waste of time cutting the air or anything like that, and just working your way down through the part here. Any questions so far while this is playing through? And I've been keeping an eye on it, haven't seen anything, so we're I'm going to, uh, covering it good. We're, we're everybody <laughs> sleeping like me. Yeah, they say they were putting them to sleep. Let me, um, let me change my accuracy here to... Oh, there's a question. Okay. Carlos is asking about linearization of the toolpath. Linearization of the toolpath. Let me uh, expand it out. I think he's asking, are you going to break it up into arcs? Are you going to do point to point? Oh, um, I can do uh, point to point, or um, that's the option when you guys see um, the. I'll have to show it to you here. Um, you can get the arc approximation. A, yep, there's a checkbox for arc approximation, and you can uncheck that and have line segments or check it and you will have the uh, radiuses in there. So I guess I, I don't really uh, need to go into too deep here, but uh, you can kind of see, get a good understanding on how the, the spiral works right there. Um, just doing, like I said, this kind of follows along the same lines of the HSS, like morph between boundary curves or the, you know, parallel to surface um, using the spiral feature in there. And we will be covering that uh, coming up shortly too. But um, just coming down on, the, you know, just doing a spiral corkscrew all the way around, 
Uh, now you guys can also, this works really good if you guys have a really tight tolerance bore. Um, you guys can do a, a spiral feature there. So you guys can tell it, you know, is to go down that 10th hour or 15th hour, 20th hour, put your uh, angle that you want in there and it's going to, you know, get a real nice high accuracy finish for you guys. And then, okay. And Ke Kevin, if you could take a look at the uh, where that setting was for arc approximation when we get back there, and then uh, Jeff's got a question regarding another setting for gouge checking uh, and avoiding fixtures. Oh, okay. I can't remember if uh, the HSM. Well, well, let me just stop it here. Okay, so the the fit arcs is right here, Carlos. So right now you'll see. In the picture, we're getting a nice, smooth, rounded. Now, if I turn that off, we are going to have those straight, jagged lines right there. So that's where you want to go and turn that off. And uh, that should answer that one right there for you. Now, Jeff, you're asking about fixture. With HSM, um, let's see. Let's see. So you can, the gouge check while linking, um, you, HSM will not gouge your part. Now, if I, let me just hit, get the little question mark here, and let's see what it, it's telling us right here. Just make sure I'm going to tell you the right thing. Gouge checking while linking. What I'm guessing it's doing here is when it's doing the, yeah, I don't see anything. It's just a dad to step down. Yeah, I think all that gulch checking is going to check against your target, which yeah. your fixture is not defined as your target. It's not It's not going to incorporate that into that link. Yep, yep, correct. Um, so there is no real gouge to... Not like uh, 3D I machining where you guys can do a gouge check against, or uh, not a gouge check, but uh, let me just get out of here. And I'll show you right here where you have the you fixture. Can add in a fixture there though if you wanted to, and then se select it in that area to gouge check against. Okay, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, let's do that. If you had one. Do assembly insert. See if I can remember where I have all my stuff saved. And to float. Thing rotate around here, and we'll just do some quick mates here. Tangent. If anybody's wondering who that phantom uh, help desk guy was, that was Paul. <laughs> yeah, Paul's so, listening on us. <laughs> hi, hi, Paul. Thanks for the input on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to trip them up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and, a, and a couple things that I mean, to kind of note is, you know, as Kevin was going there, um, you know, kind of showing, hey, you know, go go look at the online help. That's one thing. The other, the other, you know, way to get help is, you know, the support staff. So, um, you know, having having somebody else, another one of the support guys who, um, you know, could, could have an answer for you is is another good resource. So support team is uh, phenomenal in, in taking care of the customers so and they bounce, bounce these questions off each other day in day out you always got somebody else kind of joining in on a call or or uh, um, you know getting that extra resource available so absolutely okay. Kevin maybe if you could bring that down like a little further well I do have stock on the bottom of there 
Yeah, but I mean, it's not going to hit the fixture there. I'm just thinking if you oh. put it down into the vise of that, gotcha. like, just a gouge. Yeah, like bring it down like a half inch or an inch, and we'll just see if it actually keeps the tool away from it. We're going rogue here big time, so I don't know <laughs> if it's going to work or not. <laughs> If it doesn't work, we'll blame we'll blame Jeff 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 for this uh, for this question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a synchronize. <laughs> Got the smiley face on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're down in the fixture, and let's go to our gouge check. And let's do a show. Yep, that looks good. Save and calculate. And actually, so this plays through faster. I'll change our step down to a little bit more coarse so we can buzz through the simulation for you guys. You guys aren't watching paint dry. I'm not sure if this is really the way that it's meant because it, it does say for linking, so I don't know if this is going to affect the toolpath or not. All right, and I'm just going to do our passes. I'm going to set this to 20 thou. Change it. Hey, Kevin, mm -hmm. change the constraint boundary to external so that it does all the way to the bottom. Yeah, and then change the depth. I think it's all the way going down, isn't it? Yep, it's going all the way. Yeah, let's let this work. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but yeah. And is there any linking going on in that area where it was yeah, is going to get involved with the fixture? Really, but I'm curious. Oh, oh. look at that! Yep. Hey. Oh, isn't that fancy? Ta-da! <laughs> do a solid verify for you guys, and you can see. Oops, I must have clicked the machine. Good stuff right there. Solid verify. And good question there, Jeff. That's uh, you know uh, that's what makes these uh, um, sessions uh, worthwhile. Uh, these these questions come up, and it's you know good to good to see a lot of things. You know, see what you know, getting the software to do what you want it to do, and and troubleshooting to find the solution to get it to do um, what you want it to. So that's uh, and that, that, that could be example. a whole different class right there, fixtures and how to avoid them. Yeah. Now I can want to wipe the sweat off my eyebrow because Jeff always got <laughs> has the, the good questions to try to stump me in. Stump the jump. No more, Jeff. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see... Uh, It gets down here. So, Jeff, are you going to be taking that test shortly then? <laughs> yep, so, okay, keep going here. So, yep, it is, com looks like we're okay. just dinging it there, but it could just be a tolerance issue um, that we're running into because I have my tolerance set pretty loose right now just so the simulation would go through faster. So, um, well, I think there's a, wasn't there a setting there, too, as to, like, avoidance? Let's uh, take a peek here. Um, passes, it passes. No, we don't get a, uh, a, an actual number that we can put in there. Um, but it, it, 
it's going to get real close. Um, now, like I said, it, it could be a tolerancing when I'm playing that solid verify through it. I do have it set pretty loose for this part, but the option is there for you guys. So if you guys do have a fixture that's completely in the way or a toe clamp, it will avoid it for you guys. So, Okay, any questions on this part? Because we do have a couple other uh, spiral parts I want to show you guys here. All right, so I'll get out of here. Okay, so we have a little bit more of a, a 2D part right here. So um, basically have the part completely done, but we have our a, a taper angle right here. And this works good if you guys don't have a, a taper mill to follow along that surface, just using profile. So you guys can use the HSM for that. So what we'll do is, same thing as before, do our HSM, use our helical machining, and we will grab we got right here. Oh, looks good. Um, straight boundaries. Throw it around there. We'll do external passes. We'll set it to five thousand again, and let's do a saving calculate. Oh, I got that long spiral in there. Um, if this is this spiral, you know, what I need to do is just save this out as a template and load it as my default template um, so that it doesn't keep coming up in there. But that's an easy enough fix for to do. Okay, so we got our part there. Um, and like I said, a lot of this stuff is already set for you guys. Um, it's going to work very well with the default values. Um, the only thing I'm really going to change here is the the step down and uh, the boundaries. So we'll just go ahead and do a simulate here. Now we're actually using a flat end mill right here just because we're coming up to a flat floor. Customer didn't want a radius in there, um, wanted a straight edge, and this is gonna be the way to do it for you guys. We're almost down to the bottom here. Now it looks like it's taking forever, but if you actually look at the cycle time here, I mean we're only 54 seconds into it, so it's it's more of the, the simulation time. Um, you guys will notice when it does a helical in your simulation, it is does take a little bit more time just because it's, it's calculating everything for you guys. Um, so if you guys want, you guys can always come over to your machine sim or for those you guys that have it. Not sure what we're uh yeah, we got a it's a regular Haas VF three on this one, but go in here and play it around and this one we can actually speed up much faster. But it's kinda cool to see. So like I said, um, you know, the HSM, you know, it can work on all three D surfaces, but with the spiral it is it does work better if you guys are just going around, you know, all four sides going around a part or a circle. Um, doesn't really work good just if, if you're just doing one angled surface. So if you guys, if the surface was angled right here, um, that's not going to be your ideal choice just because it can't do with a spiral all the way around. So, Okay, got one other spiral one to show you and then we'll get on to the horizontal here. So we got a little five axis part right here. 
Um, basically, I just want to do the chamfers right here and the chamfers all the way around. Um, so come in here, add our HSM. And let's see what we, we'll use a ball and mill for this one. Constraint boundaries. I'm just going to chain the top. And we'll leave it on centered. Passes, we'll put at, you know, we want a nice pretty finish for the customer at 5 thou. And I'm going to come in here, change my one. And that's just that that big helix going down into the part. Save and calculate. And we can show our toolpath. But if, if you guys can see, I did not pick my levels. So if I go to my passes, I turn this off for a second, click the Z bottom, or just highlight it. And now, it will kind of confine it just to that, that area for us. So if we do solid verify, get a nice pretty finish there. So now for the sides, we'll basically just be doing the exact same thing. HSM, Grab that same cutter, constraint boundaries, actually, oops, I did selected faces, and make sure you rotate around to the right side here, and we'll do our constant Z again, and we'll leave it on center, passes, Chew this down to 5 thou again. I'm um, going to set my bottom this time. And change this to 0.1. Save and calculate. That looks good. So now we want to do all four sides. Um, and I did kind of go over this in the a different uh, KevCam night class over the transform transformations, but uh, do a quick little overview here. We'll just do a transform. We'll do a four axis, include the original, every one at 90 degrees, and so now I have all four sides. Save that. And if we want, we can come in here to machine sim. This is a Haas UMC right here. Come in here. You know, slow it down just a little bit for you guys. And you'll see right there's a perfect example of why to have machine sim because I'm actually whacking my table right there. Um, so I need to make some adjustments there, but another great reason to have that machine sim. But uh, so just easy, just doing a four axis, um, using to you know get that little radius in there for you guys. Um, you know we could technically come out here and do the whole outside of the part using a spiral too. Um, you know it's totally up to you guys. Like I said, with uh, with machining, I, I I can't suggest you know much of anything for you guys because if I hand this part off to you know, 10 of you guys, you guys can tell me 10 different ways to machine it. So um, just want to give you guys all the tools there um, so you guys can do it whatever, which way that you would like to. Okay. Any questions at all with spiral? Okay. Well, we do have one from Eric. Thanks, Paul, for showing me this. Yeah, I was just hey, the just previous. Just a comment about the oh, transform. Okay. So, again, again, great job with the support, both Paul and, and Kevin. I, you guys uh, do a great job in taking care of the customers. So, so you bet. Great, great comment there, Eric. Okay. So now we are going to get into the horizontal. Um, 
Let me close out of this part here. Now, horizontal is going to pick up anything that is flat. Um, this one. Okay, so and it, the the horizontal HSM. A lot of a lot of people think HSM is just for 3D only. Um, it's not, and that's what I want to kind of get you guys comfortable with is use those those tool paths something other than you know 3D, and it does work in 3D very well. Um, so with HSM horizontal is going to pick up all the flat areas of the part. But I got to select it there. Um, so you'll see right here, it's just going to, it's not going to do any of the curvature, um, none of the tapers, it's just going to pick up the flat bottom floor walls. So, and I did kind of cover this a little bit um, right before the first of the year, but uh, kind of do a little bit of an overview again here, kind of showing you what's going on. So right now, basically what I did is came in here and I got everything roughed out using 3D iMachine. Um, came came in there, roughed everything out to 10 thou leaving on the wall, and basically I just need to come back and finish up all these pocket areas, cleaning up these flat faces in here. Um, I think I do have a little bit of material on the top also. So, like I said, come in here, use your HSM. We'll leave it on horizontal. Excuse me. And we'll just use that same tool. Constraint boundaries. I'm going to do a manual here, and we're just going to do that chain all the way around. Now, you guys can do the automatic. Um, I guess just a little old school way. I always like picking my own um, just so I know what it is and what it's doing there. Um, now, your passes. Um, we are using a half-inch cutter, so our passes doing a 250 thou step over will be, work fine. Um, so you have a, uh, you can do a max offset if you want. Smoothing is kind of what we covered last week. If you want, you know, it's going to kind of smooth everything out. Um, detecting your core areas and refining your corners. So if you want to do radius corners, uh, a little bit easier on your machine, you can definitely turn that on. Uh, same thing with the fit arcs, kind of covered that already. Um, you guys do have the option in your smoothing to get a little bit more fine tuning there of the what the smoothing does for you. And then we kind of covered this all last week too, so I don't want to dig in too deep here. Um, edit your surface or, um, you know, doing the gouge check with the uh, fixture or different parts that you don't want it to touch. And then the link section, um, kind of same thing as what we talked about last week. You know, you have all your, your strategy, you know, climb cutting right here. Um, you can do conventional. Um, link by Z level, so if you want it to work on each level one at a time, or you can cluster them together um, using dynamic stock. Um, using dynamic stock off to, uh, let me look at what this one says here. So it's kind of uh, slicing up the part so it stays um, you know, in one one core area instead of bouncing around on each of the Z level. Okay, so let's just do a saving calculate. So now, basically, what I just did is <laughs> it's really kind of quite nice too. Is we did 3D I machining prismatic, got everything roughed out, and then we used the horizontal machining to come in and finish all the floors and the walls. So if we just do a simulate here, get it updated here from the uh, 3D I machine. Any questions on the horizontal while this is uh, updating the stock? Uh, I must have forgot to turn on my tolerance here. Oh, 
Okay. So now if we hit play, I'll slow it down a little bit for you guys here. I can go fast. It's going to come up and find all the flat surfaces and come and finish all those flat areas for you using a contour style uh, a pattern of machining that out. So it's a real nice feature inside here. Um, you know, like I said, we basically just roughed out this part, or basically just machined the whole entire part here minus the, the holes in two operations with the same cutter, one just using 3D machining, and two with the HSM horizontal. So it works really good on those flat areas for you guys. Um, now, like I said, if you guys have a full, you know, if you guys take it to the extreme, we have a big, huge 3D cavity, and you do have some flat areas that you would like a nice contour finish on. Um, instead of doing, you know, a pocketing operation, you guys can come in here and use your horizontal machining. Um, let me just, I think I have one more part for you on this one. And, and uh, Kevin, that's a good example of, you know, we, we talk about that uh, with new customers is, you know, HSM is kind of geared towards the guys who are doing a lot of mold core cavity type work. But uh, that, that's a good example of, you know, how quickly you can throw a program, one tool path on a part, to, a prismatic part, and get it all um, done very quickly instead of having to pick all those geometries like in a 2D type yeah. environment. So Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. So we got another 2D part right here, or prismatic part. Um, like I said, we have it all all roughed out, leaving, let's see, what do we leave on here for, or what do we leave on here for a wall? So I have 15 thou on the wall on the floor still, so to come back and do some, uh, you know, nice looking tool path and so instead of doing come back and doing a pocket operation um, I can come in here and just grab my HSM horizontal here and we'll just use that same tool oh, we'll use, use a little smaller one here straight boundaries has the outside of my part passes We'll leave it kind of at, at everything at default so you guys can kind of see what's going on right there. Save and calculate. And before I simulate, I'm going to come in here and do a simulate and make sure my settings are uh, tuned down a little bit so it don't take so long to calculate. Okay, so we got our part here. Uh, we still have all the material, you know, on the walls and floors. Come back with our HSM. And cleans up everything for you. So, real nice feature to have, um, you know, with those prismatic parts. Now, I do have one other part here I want to show you guys before we get done here. This one's a little, dug a little deeper here. So here's another part um, in, a, in a, a 3D area. So we have a lot of 3D surfaces going on there, but you guys will see that we do have some flat areas. So this is where it comes real nice to do that horizontal machining because we can use, um, you know, we did a 3D eye machining to get everything roughed out um, using, you know, 3D constant step over or whatever tool path to come in here. But we still have these flat areas that, you know, a 3D tool path is not going to work very well on. So you can come back and do the horizontal. And like I said, the horizontal is just going to pick up all the, the little flat areas of this part and do a contour style pattern on there. So. Um, and I do have that on one of these here, yeah, right here. So if I just do, uh, um, let me make sure my settings are real tight for this uh, 3D eye machine, so we don't have you guys waiting. And Kevin, I just want to mention we're getting close to the uh, last 10 minutes here, so just uh, if you guys got some questions you want to get covered here before we wrap up, uh, 
try to get those in there, and I'll try to get them answered here before the end of the end of the session. So yeah, definitely, guys, feel free to ask away. Even though that uh, we're giving Jeff a hard time, it's uh, it's good to have that. Okay, we'll give it a second to update the model here. There we go. Hit play. I'm doing that nice contour pattern all the way around the entire part. Does everybody here have currently have HSM as one of the modules in their uh, one of their tools in their toolbox? Okay, very good, Clarence. Thank you, Hi. Jeff. Yeah, I know for a fact that uh, of one of them that does not. He just added HSS. And Who is that? He's probably think uh, it's Eric. No, <laughs> Eric, we got to get you on that bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use it now that I know I can avoid the fixtures. <laughs> see, it's good to ask those questions, Jeff. All right. So you guys will see right here, uh, like I said, completely full 3D, you know, cavity or, or molds here. Um, and that HSM, you know, horizontal just came up and cleaned up all those flat areas. So real nice feature to have, um, real nice to use. So, And uh, we'll be bringing this part up. Uh, a lot just because there is a lot to show you guys here in HSM. So, you know, next week we are going to be covering, exit out of here. Next week we are going to be covering the linear and radial machining. So um, we'll get into this part again a little bit and I'll uh, come up with some more parts so you guys aren't seeing the same parts being machined by the each week but uh, or if you guys do have a part that you know you might know that linear machine might look good send those over to me um, and by you send them over you're, you're letting me uh, give me the okay to show it to the whole world here so but um, like I said if you guys have parts send them over to me uh, any questions or concerns email me um, let me know what we can do to help you guys out because like I said in the past we guys want you you know, as Solid Game customers to be just blown away on, you know, how well we can support you guys. So let us know what we can do to, you know, make that experience better for you guys. But, um, Tim, you got anything else or am I missing anything? Uh, I don't think so. I think you did a pretty good job of covering everything there and uh, you guys had had some good questions. I also want to congratulate uh, George there on his uh, certification and uh, the rest of you guys, uh, you know, uh, Checking with your account manager or Kevin about uh, getting some of that, uh, um, looking at those tests. So that's it's good, uh, good, good things to have in your arsenal for uh, you know your personal uh, careers. Yeah, shine up that uh, LinkedIn account a little bit, and we are going to be <laughs> adding on um, with the website. So once um, it's we're still kind of getting it rolling here, but um, on the certificate. Uh, the solid game certification site there will be an area where it will show you guys you know the certified users in the world so this is just not going to be for us they're going to they want to get this going worldwide um and uh there will be a, a drop down list so you can see who's certified or you know maybe i know a lot of you guys own your own shops um you know you're looking for a guy this is where it's going to be a good place to come and find a guy and say hey you know for instance, George Lauer, he, he passed the test. I want to hire him. You know, I know he's good in solid cam just by doing that. So we'll be getting that added in here very shortly. But, uh, um, you know, when you guys pass the test, you get a nice little certificate uh, that we kind of came up with uh, from the team. But, uh, George, do you like the certificate? Must not have. He is not writing back. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, he's gonna frame gonna, it. Yep, he's gonna frame it. Excellent. So, um, 
Yeah, but, you know, thanks again, guys, for coming in on your, your Wednesday night. And like I said, you know, email me, you guys, you know, whatever we can do to help you guys out, um, your, you know, add suggestions, ideas in here. I, actually, Jeff had a great idea, um, you know, inside Solid Cam, kind of get back to things here, we have the uh, tool setup sheets. Um, you guys can do the the Microsoft Word document, um, and Jeff, he, there is ways to customize the setup sheets for your guys' liking. Um, I'm gonna have to do a huge amount of digging and figure out how to do it just because all we got from development was a, a document saying how to modify it, and it's more of a Microsoft side of things, so um, I'll be looking into that. It'll look at this class more towards the, the summer side of things just because there's going to be a lot of investigation and a lot of research and development going on right here. So um, just like I said, so Jeff sent that over, so we'll, we'll get that added into the class. So and any, a lot of you guys have put those suggestions in, so and we're definitely getting to those for you guys. So um, any suggestions, send them over. But uh, like I said, thanks again, guys, um, for joining us tonight. And this will be on the YouTube channel. Oh, about, you know, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning it should be on there so you guys can view it on there as reference. But like I said, if you guys have questions, give us a call on the support line, shoot me an email, and we'll get, we'll get you guys taken care of. So, All right, guys, have a wonderful night, and we will talk to you next Wednesday. All right, nice, nice job, Kevin and Paul. Thanks for joining us too. And customers, uh, you know, appreciate all your time this, uh, this evening, and uh, let us know if there's something we could do better for you. Have a great night. All right, guys. See ya.